Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 news update. It's been quite a while since my last update and there's been a lot happening on the PS4 over the past few weeks to dive into. Not so much happening on the PS5, but this is typically what you tend to see whenever a new jailbreak comes out for one system or the other. The developers are mostly the same developers that work on both systems. So if something new comes out for the PS4, the focus shifts to the PS4 for a while. And that tends to be what happens depending on what system the developers are focusing their attention on at the time. At the moment that has been the PS4 but it will eventually shift back over to the PS5 again and I do still have some PS5 topics to get into here. But before we get started with that let's go ahead and cover all the PS4 news. So first of all we got a new system software version bringing the firmware up to 12.52 on the PS4 and it does say that they've made some security fixes to the system software in this particular version. Obviously, we do not want to update to 12.52. If you're on 12.50, stay on 12.50. Hopefully, you were able to get the Lua game demos while you could, while that was the latest firmware. But now it looks like they have patched something in 12.52. So we want to just stay on as low a firmware as possible. It's also worth mentioning that the revert mod exists, which allows you to revert your console back to the previously installed firmware. So if you're on 12.50, any previously installed firmware is going to be a jailbreakable firmware. But if you update from 12.50 to 12.52, then your previously installed firmware will be 12.50, which is also not jailbreakable. So that is something to bear in mind as well. It's a good idea to stay on 12.50 because your console is very likely revertible back to a jailbreakable firmware using the revert method. Obviously, that's not something that uh, most people are going to be able to do because you need to know what you're doing with soldering to revert the system. But, you know, maybe there's a mod shop or a repair shop somewhere that you could potentially send your console to that could do it for you. So definitely something worth keeping in mind here. Now we've also seen that, that firmware 12.50 and 12.52 has got support for the PS4 Hen payload. So that basically means that if we ever get a new jailbreak for 12.50 or 12.52, we'll be able to load the PS4 Hen on it pretty much as soon as there's a bin loader available so that we can then jailbreak it. Now obviously that doesn't mean there's a jailbreak available for it yet. And uh, unfortunately, it seems that some people may have updated based on this information. According to Chameleon, who says that they've received requests on how to jailbreak 12.50 and 12.52, and even many people updating their PS4s to these firmwares, which obviously you should never do because just because we have payloads that now support those higher firmwares, we need an actual jailbreak to be able to load them. And that's the, the big important thing that we don't have yet. So that is something obviously to keep in mind there. We're also seeing PS4 digital only games being dumped and turned into fake packages. There's been a whole lot of games recently over the past few weeks that are now being made available. So lots of games that previously could not be dumped before are now being dumped and we're getting lots of, you know, PS2 games and some kind of obscure PS4 games that were only available in digital form that are now being made available as fake packages that you can run on your jailbroken PS4. So that is awesome to see. So recapping the progress that's been made on the 12.02 jailbreak so far, we have got, of course, Gold Hen version 2.4 B18.4 that was recently released with support for 12.0 and 12.02 firmware. It is just the previous version of Gold Hen with 12.0 and 12.02 support. So no new features added in this version. There is also a bug I've noticed with this version on 12.02 at least which is that often when I go to shut down the console, it fails to shut down. The LED just continuously blinks and it doesn't actually turn off. So that does appear to be one of the bugs at the moment. I believe this was just kind of a hasty release to try and get support for 12.0 and 12.02. There is a, I believe, a more significant update that is being worked on at the moment. And Chameleon has also talked about looking into the semi-persistent method that Alice have talked about back in September of last year which can potentially allow us to kind of keep Gold Hen running or not have to at least go through the process of rerunning the jailbreak and rerunning Gold Hen whenever you basically restart the console. That would be the idea. So it looks like there is something that might be able to be done there, but we'll have to wait and see if that comes in the next release of Gold Hen. There's also been some improvements to the open source version of Hen, the PS4 Hen project, which works on 5.05 up to technically 12.52, although we don't have a jailbreak for those firmwares yet. So let's just say 5.05 to 12.02 realistically. So there has been a new plugins feature added here from Illusion, which adds a few different plugins, the FTP server plugin, the kernel log plugin, as well as also a shell UI plugin, which augments the settings menu to add a new menu option in there called hen settings, which then has a few additional options like a package installer, 
as well as a package installer allowing you to install packages from the hard drive as well as the USB, as well as payload options which allow you to customize the hen settings like being able to enable and disable the plugins feature and the firmware update blocker and a bunch of other options built in there for customizing the homebrew enabler although those only apply on a restart so you have to restart the console and then run hen again for those changes to take effect but that is included in the latest version and of course i have videos already going over uh, this new update to the ps4 hen and the latest gold hen release which i'll leave down in the video description most homebrew applications are also working fine up to firmware 12.02 because most of them are now firmware agnostic so applications like the Apollo save tool, the PS4 cheats manager, the homebrew store, items flow, PS4 explorer version 2. For the most part, those are all working without any updates. Although Lightning Mods has released a new update for items flow just to add support for some additional features within there. So if we look at the change log, we can see that there's been a new option to copy from Sandbox instead of copying from the PFS image. We also have the fuse offsets that have been updated. Fuse being the NFS share feature, which allows you to run games directly from an NFS share instead of from local storage. And you can also install package files from the NFS share as well. So those offsets have been updated for 11.xx and 12.xx support. We also have fixed an issue causing items flow to lag with custom themes loaded, create more stability with custom themes. We also have the Ukrainian language support, uh, the don't ask again message to the startup cover. So whenever you load items flow, it would always ask you if you want to download the covers now, although you can now tell it to don't ask me again. So it will not ask you that message again every single time you load up the application so you can load the application faster. Definitely a useful feature. We've also got replaced cover message advanced setting with an option to kill the daemon on app close, which is mainly for rest mode. We've also got a default font added. The package patch detection for the package installer has been updated and an issue has been fixed with the items flow versioning. So that's all been included there in the latest update 1.07 for items flow. And then also we've got the remote Lua loader, which has had a couple of small updates. We have a new game that was added a few weeks ago, CUSA 14324. There are additional games that are not yet in this list that either have support already or will likely get support very soon. The list is available on the PS4 developer wiki which is not displayed in a very readable form. So we'll go ahead and let AI print a more readable version here of this list so that you can see what other games you could possibly buy to be able to load the exploit in the future. If you are struggling to find one at a reasonable price at the moment, some of these games may require tweaks in the Lua loader to get it to work, which may be why they're not yet added to the official list yet. And now the remote Lua loader also shows your IP address when you load it so that you don't have to go into the settings to look up your IP and then go back onto the application when you want to send a payload. It just tells you the IP address and port number there when you load it, which is definitely a welcome change. So moving on to the PS5, there's been a few updates for the Blu-ray drive exploits. We're now on version 19 of Victorious X's ISO. So this is the auto jailbreak ISO, which now includes things like the Air PSX plugin that's now been added. So as you can see, the UI has been updated a little bit with the icons. Although I don't know, do you like these icons better or do you prefer the ones uh, from this the Flow version that uh, Zeko sent me? So I don't know which one you guys prefer, but we'll go ahead and switch back to the original here. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of different options. The remote jar loader lets you send payloads obviously remotely over the network to execute on the console. The USB jar loader lets you put the payloads on a USB drive and they can be loaded from here. We also have your normal payloads that were there before as well as the Air PSX payload that is also now available. So it's good to see that is now included. And then of course you've got the pipeline runner which is used to chain load all of the different payloads which is what you run when you try to jailbreak your console. You've got the all-in-one version which runs the jailbreak, the elf loader and then loads the web server payload and the ETA hen payload. Then the normal jailbreak is the same minus the web server payload and then I believe the third one here all-in-one no ETA hen I believe should run everything including the web server payload apart from ETA hen and then the normal jailbreak no ETA hen I believe is just the the jailbreak itself probably with the elf loader without running any other payloads so those are your kind of pipeline runner options so normally you would run option one or two so i'm going to go ahead and run the all-in-one eta hen version so particularly with this version it should be a little bit faster and uh, more stable than previous versions so we're going to go ahead and run this it's never going to be as fast as something like the 
uh, Lua exploit, of course, just because of the nature of that exploit allows it to run a lot faster. But as you can see, only took a few seconds there and we're now running the elf loader. We're now also running the web server payload, as we can see there. And it's now killing the disc player, which it needs to do before it can load ETA hen. So it automatically closes the disc player and then it should start trying to run the ETA hen payload, which we can now see is launching. So yeah, definitely seems to be a lot faster and smoother than previous versions. And it now runs, of course, the latest ETA hen payload version 2.2b. And not only that, but it also works completely offline. It was changed over to the elf loader that can then load payloads from the local host. So it no longer requires a network connection to use the elf loader, which allows it to operate completely offline so that you can stay completely offline and still use the disc player and load all of your payloads. So some pretty good improvements that are being made there to the Blu-ray version of the exploit from Victorious X. So another project I just wanted to highlight here is the Laps Core project by D-Link Turtle, which is the Laps Kernel Exploit plus Master Core, which equals Laps Core. So this is basically an attempt, obviously, to port the new kernel exploit to the Master Core exploit, which was kind of a user land exploit that came out a couple of years ago in a game called Okage Shadow King, which could be used to basically kind of break out of the PS2 emulator on the PS4 and use it to actually sideload other PlayStation 2 games, which was a pretty cool feature at the time, especially since this could be done just with kind of a user land exploit on its own without having to chain it with like a kernel exploit. But that is what is being attempted here is to actually chain it with the lapse kernel exploit so that you could actually jailbreak your console if you happen to still have a licensed copy of Okage Shadow King on your PS4 or PS5 on a jailbreakable firmware. Now, I certainly wouldn't hedge my bets on using this to run the jailbreak in the future because, again, it is like a just a hobby project for the most part. So I'm not sure if it will get fully supported, especially since the game in question is a digital only game. And it's, you know, a lot more complicated to try and get your hands on it than the Lua games, because at least with the Lua games, you can get a physical copy and then the demos are free, whereas this game is a paid game that is digital only. So, but, you know, if you happen to be around, you know, in 2023, when I was covering this pretty extensively, maybe you actually have a copy of Okage Shadow King on your PS4 or PS5, a licensed copy, and it's now on a jailbreakable firmware. Maybe this project might end up being the answer to being able to run uh, the new laps jailbreak using uh, that Mastercore exploit. But again, we'll have to wait and see if this project actually gets completed because it is at the moment work in progress. Now, last but not least, we also have Lightning Mods who has sold one of his PS5 test kits to Echo Stretch, which can then be used hopefully in the development of K-Stuff. So K-Stuff needs to get ported above firmware 7.61 to support all of the new firmwares that are now jailbreakable on the PS5 thanks to the new Laps exploit. So that will hopefully be happening now. Obviously, Echo Stretch has been busy working on the PS4 version of Hen, uh, the open source version, but now we have people like Al Azev and also Illusion working on that. So I suspect that the focus will probably shift back over to porting K-Stuff for the PS5. So that is something that we'll hopefully see more development on fairly soon. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.